Good evening. Welcome to St. John this evening. Our service will be using the readings appointed for the three-year lectionary. We used the one year on Sunday. Um, but the three-year actually ties in pretty well with this last Sunday and this coming Sunday. So I thought the readings would be appropriate. So we'll do a little bit of a connection uh, that way. Everything you need for this service and it is on the sheet apart from the hymn and the order of service. So we'll be in service, divine service setting one, page 151. I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at our life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord.
the epistles from Romans chapter 7. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that it, and that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do, or that I do not want, is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Maybe seated. We're going to sing a hymn that may be a little new to you. I think we've sung it before, but hymn 699. I heard the voice of Jesus say.
Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today's epistle reading is one of the most fun ones to read. I don't think I've ever read it without a mistake. (laughs) And uh, I suppose it's partly because, well, it wasn't originally written in English, and it's being translated from, from Greek, but I think it's something more than that. What Paul is trying to describe for you is something so contrary to reason and expectation, contrary to nature and our experience, that He's even struggling to put words to it. So no wonder that I have trouble reading it out loud. So maybe we should try to break it down, and then you'll see why this scripture is often skipped over by evangelicals, by Lutherans, by anyone trying to read the Bible, because they can't make heads or tails of it. But actually, if we take the time to understand what Paul is getting after, you'll find out that the Bible presents a view of reality of this world that's quite different than the one that you think you live in. So he says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. The law being spiritual, meaning it was breathed out by the Holy Spirit, given to Moses on Mount Sinai. It's referring to the law of Moses, as it's sometimes called. Here, I think, more specific than the books of Moses, but specifically that word, breathed out by the Spirit, given to Moses, and then delivered to the people. Paul says, I am carnal, sold under sin, meaning I am of flesh and blood, enslaved over to my sins. Now, part of the tricky bit of this sentence is that Paul just told you what or how he was sold into slavery, to sin. And it was by the law breathed out by the Spirit. Now, that may be a new idea to you, but that God actually gives the law to hand us over to our sins, to our desires, to bind us to them. That seems contradictory because we think of laws as generally being good and guiding us in the way that we should go and telling us what's right and good and true. Of course, That's not how law is usually used. It's to restrain, it's to punish, it's to discipline, um, and even to condemn. Even all of the best of our intentional laws do that. So that's the first point. And already that's a pretty radical statement for Paul to say, that it is the law that sold him over to sin. As a result, for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, or want to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. That's exactly the consequence of what happens when the law is preached lawfully. You were told, maybe you remember Sunday's sermon, you were told to keep the Sabbath and not to neglect your work, but to keep it in order. First God's word and then your work. Well, how's that been going for you this week? Have you remembered to pray in all things and to sing a hymn as you went about your work, as you were instructed to on Sunday? Or rather, even though you thought, yeah, that's a good idea, Pastor, when you heard it preached and maybe even wanted to do it, you haven't done it. And you know that the things that you are not to do, because the law tells you, thou shalt not, right, murder, for example, or steal or commit adultery, Just by giving that word to you, now you want to do it. As Paul talks about this also in his epistle to the Galatians. Same idea. That by giving the law, God increased trespasses. He brought the flesh into its enslavement to sin. And actually, sin increased, he says in Galatians. Hmm. If then... I do what I will not to do. I agree with the law that it is good. The law says, thou shalt not, and I don't do it. Hmm. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. 
So again, Paul is saying that the law given by God on Mount Sinai that told him what he should do and what he should not do, he's done the opposite, and it was actually the law that, that brought that about in his flesh. It's sin who dwells in me that does these things. For I know that in me that is in my flesh nothing good dwells. This is the only result that is possible. When you tell a sinner what to do, they are going to do the opposite. By definition, especially if that word comes from God. For to be a sinner is to rebel against God's word. For to will is present with me. I want to do the right thing, but how to perform what is good I do not find. There's no capacity in me to do and to follow the instructions that God has given in his law. For even the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that's the thing that I practice. It's good so far. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it. But again, it's the sin that dwells in me that has been amplified, that's been encouraged even by this law of God. I find then a law that evil is present with me. I, if, excuse me, I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. So the one who wills to do good but does not do it is by nature then evil. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Now here he's speaking of another law, and this is why it gets confusing. When he speaks of the law of God according to the inward man, he's talking about the word that Jesus has spoken. That word, that law, if you like, is at war with the law of my flesh, the law of my mind, that one that's bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin with my members. So as he does in Galatians, so here in Romans, he describes an inner conflict of every Christian, everyone who's been given the Spirit of Christ, who've been joined to Christ, who've been adopted as sons of God in Christ Jesus through their baptism, now has been brought into not an external conflict between powers and principalities and places, although that's true, but even a conflict with one's own flesh and blood, an inner warfare, to which Paul then says, O wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? I will to do it. I cannot. It's not present within me. I know what not to do, and that's the thing I keep doing. And the only reason I know that is because the inward man, Christ Jesus, and his word is at conflict. With that same word, with another word, I should say, that God has given, again, by Moses on Sinai, that has brought me in captivity to sin. Who's going to save me from this body of death? And he finally says, I thank God it's through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there's two things going on here that we must keep straight. Maybe three things. There's two different words from God, and they have very different purposes. And they, one cannot do the same as the other. There is the law of God that was given because of trespasses, because of sins, because of the people's rebellion against God. Thus he gave them a law that even brought them into further captivity. Actually, a word from Sinai that killed them. Would daily, they would have to die to their own thoughts, their own words, their own intents. As God put a terrible burden upon their shoulders, a heavy yoke. If you've read Leviticus, you know the daily sacrifices that were required, all of the mandates and rules, even before they were amplified by the Pharisees, were too terrible to bear. People were constantly rebelling against that word, as sinners do. In contrast to that word is the word that Jesus speaks, which he described in our gospel today as what? An easy yoke, a burden that is light. This word, simply distilled, is what we call the gospel, or you would say the forgiveness of sins. God forgiving you your sins, and then the only burden that's upon you is to forgive one another as he has forgiven you. That's it. Those are the, that's the rule of the Christian church. That's the law of God according to the inward man, Christ Jesus. It's simply to forgive and to be forgiven, to receive God's word of forgiveness and to go forth forgiving one another. He calls that an easy burden and an easy yoke, 
not too difficult. Of course, you know it's probably even more difficult to forgive one another than it is to simply not murder, steal, and commit adultery and covet. Well, if we deceive ourselves anyway. So that's one thing. There's two different words. Attached, then, these words are to two different kingdoms. There's the kingdom of this world to which the law belongs. And then there's the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of Christ. It goes by different terms. We call that the right-hand kingdom. And that kingdom is governed by the gospel. The church belongs to both in, in a sense, right? We are physical people. We belong in this world. But of course, we are also in Christ, and thus we are also not of this world, belonging to the kingdom of heaven. So as Christians, our flesh is disciplined by the law until it's finally put in the grave, and the new man, Christ Jesus, arises in us to live before God in righteousness and purity forever, according to the forgiveness of sins. So we have two kingdoms, we have two words, and then of course, you as a Christian have two natures of a sort. And that's what Paul was giving us in Romans 7. He called it um, the, the inward man versus the sinful man, the wretched man, the law of sin versus the law and the law of God, right? So we have two inward persons. One that you were, of course, born into, being sons of Adam and Eve, you were born into sin, just like Cain and Abel and Seth and all those that followed. And that means that you do not love God by nature, do not want to hear his word, do not want to live according to his, his commands. And that's why he added the law to Moses long after he had given the promise to Abraham so that our sin would increase and we would actually learn to know how desperately we need that promise to be fulfilled, the promised offspring that would crush the serpent's head, the promised offspring Jesus who would gather all the nations to himself and whom all the nations would be named, the promised offspring to David who would reign eternally on his throne with grace and mercy in the forgiveness of sins, not with a terrible rule of law. And so that inward conflict Paul was describing and he wanted us to recognize that the Christian church needs to be on guard from taking off the easy yoke and the light burden that Christ has given us simply to live in the forgiveness of sins and instead to return to the way of Moses and to emphasize, to predominate with the word of law again, to try to tell both the world and our neighbors and even our own children, our family, our congregation, how to be better Christian people, how to live more God-pleasing lives. Certainly something that God, we pray, accomplishes in us by His Spirit, but not by way of law, by force, by obligation, by duty, or by coercion. Rather, this is a natural fruit, as, as the Scriptures teach, of that easy yoke and light burden that Christ puts upon us, namely, binding us to himself in the forgiveness of sins, in his suffering and death, in his shed blood, in the grace and mercy that was promised to David, fulfilled in the eternal son of David. And that's the only way out for Paul, as he rightly confessed. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Not me, not the law. I thank God, though, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May God give you to find your hope and strength in Christ and him alone. In his holy name. Amen. Amen. We confess our common Christian faith by the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all whom you have put in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land that mercy and truth, righteousness, and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the care of our schools so that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the distressed and those in sorrow. Accept, we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. Grant your Holy Spirit to those who come to the Lord's table this day, that they may receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ in sincere repentance and firm faith and to their abundant blessing. Finally, as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may greet one another with the peace of Christ.
What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will, and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, God of heart and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Hosanna, O Hosanna, O Hosanna, not in the highest. Blessed is he who, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna on him, the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, life everlasting, part of his peace. Let us pray. We give th you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.